So we looked at calcium channel blockers, we looked at beta blockers, we looked at this drug over here, ACE inhibitors. Now we're going to look at ARBs, and ARB stands for angiotensin receptor blockers. I'm going to go more um, in more detail later on, but just know that there are like four different drugs that we've already looked at, which basically means that when someone has a heart condition, they're not just taking one drug. Typically, they're taking many drugs, one, two, three, or even four drugs to treat their heart condition. So the reason why someone would be prescribed ARBs or angiotensin receptor blockers is because if they can't tolerate this medication, so angiotensin converting enzyme, if they can't tolerate the ACE inhibitors, um, and usually people who can't uh, tolerate that are typically um, black males. That's what studies have shown. So they would be prescribed ARBs if they cannot tolerate that. So we have chest pain. How does that matter um, in the dental field? Well, we need to be prepared. Anytime someone says that they've had chest pains, first of all, we won't treat them. We'll get a, done, uh, a medication or a medical consult first. And remember, if we do see them having a, ch a chest pain in our dental chair, then we can always give them sublingual nitroglycerin spray. So in our emergency kit, in the dental office, there should be nitroglycerin spray that we could put under their tongue and it should treat them because we want to prevent them from having a heart attack. Okay, let's look at hypertension, which basically means high blood pressure. So we should know that 120 over 80 is normal high blood pressure. Anytime someone has 130 or higher for the top number or 80 and higher for the bottom number, that is a sign of hypertension. That is a sign of someone having um, high blood pressure. And what happens is when someone has high blood pressure, the heart is pumping more harder um, than it should be. Okay, the heart should be pumping normally with no hypertension. If someone has high blood pressure, the heart is pumping a lot more faster. And the reason why it's pumping a lot more faster is because the blood isn't flowing nicely in the heart. So we need the heart to pump faster for it to flow nicely. So normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. If it starts to get a little high, it could be, so stage one is when it's getting high, so 130 and higher, so 130 to 139, and 80 to 89 is stage one, stage two is 140 or higher or 90 or higher, so there are stages of blood pressure. And then we have really, really high blood pressure, which is like a better in a medical emergency state. If it's higher than 180 or higher than 120, and that is when we need to treat them, or when we need to send them to the doctor, or send them to 911 ASAP, ASAP. And that has happened to us, or to me rather, where someone had been in this state and I had to call an ambulance and get them to the emergency. So how do you treat high blood pressure? Well, doctors will say that you need to exercise regularly, so lose weight, exercise, right? So physical activity, modify your diet, so healthy choices. Um, alcohol should be limited, and if you're smoking, then stop smoking, right? Those are the best ways to treat hypertension. Of course, we may need medications to treat hypertension, and these are the types of medications. And you'll notice that most of these medications we kind of touched on before. And that's because when we have a heart condition, we usually use a mixture of medications, and you'll see that most of those medications are, are names that we have seen before. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at all these medications in a lot more detail. So before you just got familiar with the name of the medication, now let's look at it in a lot more detail. So the first medication we use for high blood pressure or any heart condition is diuretics. You know how some people say that their feet all of a sudden got really swollen and there's like a lot of water retention in, or edema or fluid retention in, the, um, in their feet? Well, the reason is because they probably have a heart or kidney condition. So it's interesting to know that the heart and kidney, they work together. The heart pumps blood and oxygen, and then what it does is it sends it to the kidney. And what the kidney does is it filters or takes out any excess waste and any excess water. Right? So it takes it out and then we kind of, we pee it out. If the kidney stops working, then you will have more water because the kidney is supposed to take out all the excess water and waste. If the kidney is not working, then we're going to have more water in our body and maybe the water will pool in our feet. 
So diuretic is a water pill where it basically gets rid of any swelling, any um, water in our body. And what's interesting with diuretics is that all diuretics or most diuretic medications, they end in IDE, I -D -E, okay, IDE. So how can you remember that? Well, you know that diuretics end in IDE. So let's look at ID, which is one of uh, two letters from the IDE. Flip it, you'll get DI. DI is like diuretics, okay? So anytime you see IDE, think of diuretics, think of water pill, okay? So ID means diuretics. Okay, and thiazide is actually a very common medication, a very common water pill that is used for um, high blood pressure. Okay, let's move on to angiotensin enzyme inhibitor. So we looked at this word before, ACEI. Let's look at what it does. So what the ACE inhibitors does is, or what it, what it, yeah, what it does is it basically vasodilates the blood vessel. So if your blood vessel is small, it'll make it bigger. And when it makes it bigger, when it dilates, the blood can flow nicely into the heart. What you'll notice is most of the ACEs medications end in pril, like April. Why is that important? Well, let's look at the next slide. So anything that ends in, or any medication that ends in pril is usually, an, or is always, an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So it's an ACE medication. So think of pril like chill pril for the heart. So it chills the heart, it calms the heart, it treats the heart. Okay, so chill pril is for the heart. So it's a heart medication. Every time you see pril, chill pril, it's for the heart. Another thing you could, um, or another trick that you could use is if it ends in pril, think of April. Okay, so the month April. A, think of ace. So A is for ace. So perhaps in April it's raining a lot and you like to play card games and your favorite card is ace. So ace, April. And when you think of ace, well, ace stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay, so that's how you know that anything that ends in pril is an angiotensin converting enzyme. April ACE, right? A A. All medications have side effects. And so you'll see there's a list of side effects here. Interesting fact is that if someone is on the ACE inhibitors, and if they're taking NSAIDs, so if they're taking ibuprofen, aspirin, or naproxen, it's um, important to know that there could be um, a reduction or the, the effectiveness of this medication would be lessened. So this medication, if you're taking this medication, so like these, notice how they all end in prilk. That means that they are ACE medication, ACE inhibitor medication. If you take this medication along with NSAIDs, like these medications, you could decrease the effectiveness of this. So the heart, the, it won't work. The heart may not improve. The heart condition may not improve because we're taking this. And this is only if you're taking it for a long period of time. If you're taking it for a few days, that's okay. But if you're taking it for a long period of time, it can affect the ACE inhibitor medication. So it can affect your heart. So there are some people who cannot tolerate the ACE medication and um, as I said before, the book says that people who have, or people who are usually African-American or Black usually are not able to take the ACEI medication. So instead, they're prescribed ARBs. And ARB stands for angiotensin receptor blocker. And for the purpose of this class, just know that it's also a vasodilator. So it also opens up the blood vessel so that the blood can pump better in the heart. It's usually the second choice, so usually doctors will always prescribe ACE medication, but if they can't, if it's not working, if they're allergic, if they're um, not responsive to that first medication, then they will prescribe ARBs. ARB stands for angiotensin receptor blockers. They all end in TAN. So let's look at some examples. If you look at all these medications here, notice how they end in SARTAN, S-A-R-T-A-N. That's how you know, that if they end in sartan, that's how you know that it is an ARB drug or antiotensin receptor blocker drugs.
So when you think of the when you think of the ending certain, think of relaxed man or retirement plan because it kind of rhymes. So think of relaxes the heart. Okay. So if your heart's pumping too hard, is working too hard, we're gonna relax the heart with using a sartan medication, with using an ARB medication. Another way you can think of it is tan. So anytime you have tan at the end, you can think of ARB. And how can you think of ARB? Well, when you go to, maybe when you go to Airbnb, um, maybe we've all rented out an Airbnb at some point. When we're going to a beach destination, destination and we want to tan ourselves, then we can think of ARB for tanning ourselves when we go to Airbnb. And actually, um, another one um, that I've heard is ARB could also stand for oops, Arabs. So Arabs tan usually more easily. So if you think of anything that ends in tan, think of ARB, just minus this, think of ARB. So ARB stands for angio tensin receptor blockers this is not the greatest way because it could be um you know some people may think that this is racist and i can understand why so that's why we have other ways to think of airbnb tan to think of arb so sartan relax man which means relaxes the heart anything that ends in tan is an arb drug